Bending EMT conduit into arches or circles allows you to create some really awesome stuff like mega tree light shows, gardening hoop houses, roof structures, and really anything else that you want. And normally these kinds of bends require a lot of complex math that can be kind of confusing. So instead of turning this video into a math lesson, I created a free and easy to use calculator that makes bending arches and circles a lot simpler. In this video, I'll show you how to use the calculator along with this handheld pipe bender so you can start making some really cool stuff. Let's get into it. Before we start calculating and bending, I think it's important that we know exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Simply put, there are two different kinds of bends. You have simple ones, where basically you put a piece of conduit in the bender and then bend it to a set angle like 90 degrees, for example. This creates a really small curve and a short radius bend. We have a video tutorial on how to do this, and I'll be sure to link that down below because we're not trying to do those kinds of bends. We're doing large radius bends, which basically means we're doing a bunch of small incremental bends that eventually lead up to a large radius, as you can see here. And in order to do those types of bends, we need to know a few things like where on the conduit to mark and then eventually bend. We need to know how much conduit we need. And like I said earlier, those things can be kind of complicated to figure out, which is why I made this calculator. Now I'm looking at this on my phone, but you can pull it up on a desktop as well, or you know, tablet. I'll be sure to link it down below uh, so you can find it. You can also go to makerpipe.com and just search bend or calculator and you'll see it as one of the results. And this is gonna ask us a few questions. The first one is, what is the desired diameter of your circle? And this is basically, how big do you want your circle to be once it's completed from one side to the other? I'm gonna do a 36 inch diameter. And this tells us two important things. The total length of the conduit needed, as well as the total number of 10 foot conduit sticks needed. This is because 10 foot sticks are commonly what you'll find at Home Depot and Lowe's and places like that. Now the next question that's gonna ask is how many segments do you need? And something to keep in mind here is that total number of 10 foot sticks, if, it's, if it says you need two, for example, then we wouldn't be able to have a one segment complete circle because it's just not possible because we need at least two sticks of conduit. So that's something to keep in mind. And also you'll see that it says choose between one and four segments. Technically you could potentially do 10 segments and create some massive circle, but being able to do four segments uh, at, at the max allows you to create a 12 and a half foot diameter circle at the maximum. If you need to do a circle bigger than that, let me know and I can help you work out the math and everything for that. But I think this will be sufficient for most projects. But like I said, you just wanna choose how many segments you're gonna break this up into. And as I said in the example, we could bend a complete circle if it says our total number of conduit sticks is one, but I don't recommend trying to bend a complete circle. It is possible, but it's really challenging, especially once you get towards the end. And uh, it's just a lot easier to split it up into you know, halves or thirds or fourths, and then combine all of those together with couplings. And we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> I guess you could say we'll circle back to that later. <laughs> but for now, you just wanna choose between one and four segments. I'm gonna choose two because I think 280 degree halves makes a nice, easy uh, circle that we can create and uh, you know not be too difficult for us. And that gives us an important measurement, which is what the segment lengths are gonna be. So the two 180 degree halves are gonna be this 56 and a half inch measurement. Now the last thing we need to know is what angle that we want to bend. Now I recommend going with 10 degrees. It's nice and simple. It's already engraved on the bender head and it gives you a nice curvature. You can kind of see here, that's what I did, 10 degrees. And if you go anything over this, you can do like 20 degrees, for example, but then you're gonna have more of a flat edge with on each bend, and it could potentially not look as circular as a 10 degree bend. You could potentially go less than 10 degrees, but as I said, 10 degrees is already on the bender, so let's just keep it simple and use 10 degrees. Once we do that, that tells us the total number of bends per segment. So that means we're gonna be doing 18 bends. Since I'm doing two halves, each half is gonna be 18 bends at 10 degrees. And then the last thing that it gives us is when we need to make those bends. So every 3.14 inches, which comes out to like three and an eighth once you convert it to a fraction, every three and an eighth inch, I'm gonna bend 10 degrees for a total of 18 bends. That's all we need to know. Now we can start marking our conduit and making our bins. Let's move this table out of the way and we'll start working on that. Actually, the table is still here, but some time has passed because I went ahead and got my conduit, made some cuts and marks based on what the calculator suggested. And actually, while I was doing that, I thought of a tip that I wanted to make sure to share with you guys. You want to avoid cutting off the excess conduit until after making all your bins. Otherwise, it's extremely tough to do 
those last couple of bins. And even if you have to get more sticks of conduit than what the calculator suggested, I still think it's worth it. But with that said, all we have left to do is actually bend our conduit. And we're gonna be doing that with this handheld tool that we mentioned earlier. You can find this pretty much anywhere that you can buy EMT conduit. And you just wanna make sure to get the bender that corresponds with the size of conduit that you're wanting to bend. In my case, it's three quarter inch EMT conduit. Now to use this tool, all we have to do is line up our marks on the conduit with the arrow here in the bender head. Once we do that, we just have to step on this foot pedal, apply leverage with the handle, and basically bend the conduit until it gets to this 10 degree mark on the bender, if that's the angle you're bending to. Otherwise, you know, follow the other lines and make sure it's parallel with those depending on which one you're wanting to bend to. But for me, it's 10 degrees. We're basically just gonna bend the conduit to that angle. And if you're buying a bender after this video, I'd recommend get this one from Klein Tools. It has an angle setter, which basically acts as a bump stop and keeps you from bending past the desired angle, which in my opinion is worth it, especially when we're doing this many bends in series. But once we have it lined up and we make our bends, we just have to do that however many times you're supposed to. For me, it's 18, and then we'll have our half circle. Now I'm gonna do that to my conduit and we'll come back. All right, so I've made my bins and I have my circle ready to go. If you get to this point and realize that the diameter isn't what it's supposed to be, don't stress, just go back, make some small adjustments and tweaks until you get it exactly how you want it. Once you're satisfied, you can cut off the excess conduit, wipe off the Sharpie marks, and then join your two halves or however many segments you have together with either off-the-shelf electrical couplings and self-tapping screws or our DIY structural couplings. Once you do that, you're left with your conduit circle. <laughs> I think this is awesome. Oh, it's so cool. Now we can go make a Christmas tree or a hoop house or a hula hoop or anything because this is just awesome. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Check out the links in the description. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Raymond from the community who shared a write up on how to do this a while ago. And this video wouldn't have been possible without it. So check out his link in the description as well for all kinds of tips and tricks and cool things from him. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video.